Hey on UI7 News. The latest on the terrorist attack on a Pittsburgh synagogue that left 11 dead and how the university is responding. And we'll tell you everything you need to know about early voting on campus. And later, we'll see how things are heating up for students in the kitchen. Your UI7 News starts right now. From the Richmond Journalism Teaching Studio at the University of Illinois campus, UI7 News, your U of I news source. Good evening and welcome to this edition of UI7 News, your broadcast campus news leader. I'm Roger Blanco. And I'm Bobby McSwine. Thanks for joining us. Starting off tonight, we have breaking news coming from our neighbors just north of here. An arrest has been made in the missing persons case involving Bradley University's professor Susan Burl D. Ramirez and her husband, Antonio Ramirez Barone. The professor's 21-year-old son, Jose Ramirez, was arrested and charged with first-degree murder. And 20-year-old Matthew Roberts was arrested and charged with obstruction of justice and concealing a homicidal death. The couple was reported missing over the weekend. Deputies found blood inside the couple's home after a relative called police. Peoria County Sheriff said the bodies are believed to be somewhere in rural Henry County. The UI7 News team will keep you updated as more info on this story comes in. In national news, President Trump is visiting the Pittsburgh Tree of Life Synagogue. This is coming after Saturday's mass shooting. The President's visit today doesn't come without some tension. CNN's Omar Jimenez has the story. President Trump is set to visit Squirrel Hill Tuesday, the neighborhood in Pittsburgh where the Tree of Life Synagogue sits, now the scene of the deadliest attack on Jews in American history. Some are more welcoming of the visit than others. I turn to all of our elected leaders because hate doesn't know a political party. Hate is not blue, hate is not red, hate is not purple. Hate is in all. And many think it's too soon for the president to come. The mayor of Pittsburgh won't meet with Trump during his visit, saying he needs to focus on helping his community heal. Our focus as a city will be on the families and the outreach that they'll need this week and the support that they'll need to get through it. Mm. Uh, once we get past that, then I think there's the opportunity for um, presidential vigil. The White House invited top congressional officials to come with Trump Tuesday, but they all declined. The president will be visiting the hospital where some of the wounded are still recovering. Presidential visits to communities following tragedies are nothing new. Presidents are often thrust into the role of consoler in chief during the worst of times. But however they feel about the president's visit today, the community has one message for all politicians. I turn to them to say, tone down the hate, speak words of, of love, speak words of decency and of respect. When that message comes loud and clear, Americans will hear that. In Pittsburgh, I'm Omar Jimenez. We'll keep you updated when we have more on the Pittsburgh tragedy. In response to the shooting at the synagogue in Pittsburgh, a candlelight vigil was held Monday night, bringing members of the Jewish community on campus, administrators, students, and the community in general together for healing and peace. More now from UI7's Chris Joe. Over 300 people stood in solidarity on the quad following the shooting of a Pittsburgh synagogue where 11 people were killed. Candles were lit, a card was signed, and leaders from different Jewish groups spoke. However, I do know one thing, and that is that the Jewish people are strong. Prayed and read Psalms. May God answer on the day of distress. The leader's remarks touched on various topics, but all rallied attendees to unite to combat hatred. But our strength will come not only from finding answers, but most importantly from coming together. The idea for the event was considered the same morning. Event organizer Ilan Carroll said his restlessness the evening before was what led him to reach out to student leaders. Thank you for stepping up today. We started getting other student leaders together, contacting some of the local religious leaders, contacting some of the administrators of the school, and by about 2 o'clock we had a plan and a Facebook event, and after that the Facebook event sort of went viral and hundreds of people RSVP'd and shared it, and that's how we got a turnout. Student organizers were amazed by the efficient event setup and rapid community response despite the short notice. There was one reason why everybody came out, and it was to show solidarity with the Jewish community. So, so to me, you know, that's not something you see on a daily basis. 
in, in, the, in a world of so much hatred. So that to me just it meant so much. Vigil attendees lit these candles as a sign of solidarity, while speakers challenged university leadership. When you have people shouting, no Zionists, no KKK, no more fascist USA, that's just unacceptable. I, that's, not, that's not something you should be able to say publicly. But it remains to be seen whether combating attacks with love will yield desired results. In Champaign, I'm Chris Joe, UI7 News. Visual attendees signed a card at the conclusion of the event that was sent to the Tree of Life Synagogue. The card was sent by the Illini Halal. In political news, President Trump is making some waves with the recent comment about his concerns with birthright citizenship. Those. What the president is talking about doing, he hasn't done it yet, it's one of these things where he's amusing, <laughs> he will do it because he wants us to talk about it, is to do away with birthright citizenship. That's the idea that if you were born in the United States, you are a citizen of the United States. Let me read you what the 14th Amendment says about this. The 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution says, all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. That's the 14th Amendment. This is what the president wants us to talk about a week before the election. Listen. Some legal scholars believe you can get rid of birthright citizenship without changing the Constitution. With you an could... executive order. Exactly. Right. Uh, have you thought about that? Yes. Tell me more. It was always told to me that you needed a constitutional amendment. Right. Guess what? Amendment. You don't. You don't. Number one. Number one, you don't need that. Number two, I mean, that's in dispute. you could definitely that's very much do it. In dispute. Well, you can definitely do it with an act of Congress, but now they're saying I can do it just with an executive order. Now, how ridiculous. We're the only country in the world where a person comes in, has a baby, and the baby is essentially a citizen of the United States for 85 years with all of those benefits. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And it has to end. Um, have you talked about that with counsel? Yeah. I have. So we're in the process. It's in the process. It'll happen. This With year. an executive order. That's what you're talking about, right? Yeah, that's that's a exactly very interesting what I'm talking about. I didn't think anybody but knew that but me. I thought I was the only one. As of this afternoon, the White House has not provided additional details of the planned executive order. In the, inter the interview is part of the Axios on HBO, a new four-part documentary series debuting on HBO this Sunday, according to the news site. In other election news, early voting is really gearing up on the campus since last Thursday. Champaign County has quite a few candidates to consider during these midterm elections. There has definitely been an increase in the number of ballots cast at the Illini Union, from 550 to 1,795 as of this afternoon. Some offices the residents can vote for include Auditor, County Clerk, State Governor, Attorney General, and Illinois 13th Congressional District. Students and community members have until November 5th to vote early at the Illini Union until Election Day on November 6th. With the midterm elections just seven days away, the Illinois Student Government hosted an event geared to inform voters. During Pula Palooza on the main quad, volunteers helped spread information to aid the voting process. Lo local political teams were present to make their case. Passerbys learned polling locations and early voting dates, date, dates and times. Musical performances that were planned to complement the event were removed inside the union due to inclement weather. Well, if you're heading out to vote early this weekend, or Halloween, our own UI7's news correspondent, Nora Rogers, is here with us to give us a first look at our weather. Nora? Yeah, um, it's actually been surprisingly super warm out. If you guys didn't notice, it's almost November, and it's kind of feeling like spring today. Yeah, yeah it does, yeah. Um, and tomorrow, Halloween's going to be actually pretty good, too. I feel like we usually have, like, a freezing cold Halloween, mm -hmm. but um, it's going to be warmer temperatures. There's supposed to be a little rain, but I think it's going to be good around the trick-or-treating hours and stay dry around then. Um, other than that, a little bit of rain, but pretty warm temperatures, so. Well, we, um, she'll give us some more after this break. Thank you. Well, we'll check on what the GEO was doing this semester following last spring's strike. And we'll see how one local business is supporting Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Those stories and more are coming up. Stay tuned. Yeah. This is not my first time bartending, so... It's a sausage party in here. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> I'm very familiar. Yeah, because you're a sexy girl, Sam. Last thing, totally last thing, yeah. is that the music, when Momo kicks it into high gear, is going to get a little bit loud in here. Mm -hmm. So your customers are going to have a hard time hearing you. 
So you may want to. What? Welcome back to UI7 News. Last semester, the GEO fought a long and hard battle with the University of Illinois. Months later, they're still busy. UI7's Malik Caldwell stopped by their office to find out what's going on this semester. For some, the GEO strike feels like a distant memory, something that could have happened years ago. For others, like the organization's co-president, Bruce Covenant, it feels like just yesterday. Although the demonstration ended earlier in this year, a Supreme Court case has created a new trouble for the GEO. Across the nation, this has sort of been a big financial hit um, for unions. And what we've been working on over the summer and the semester is thinking about how do we respond to the Janus decision and how do we build on the, the success of our strike. We will win! We will win! The Janus decision by the Supreme Court says that public sector unions can no longer collect agency fees. GEO's Andy Bowman explains this further. Agency fees like, were things that we went toward, towards. Uh, pay, like, renting space to have an event to get all of our membership together. Or uh, ordering the t-shirts or the beanies that everybody saw during the strike. So as a way of showing that we're all together. Like, Let's do it strike last semester, and then the United States government struck back with the Janus decision. That being said, the organization isn't giving up, and they're powering ahead, invigorated by the successes of the strike. Co-President Hillary Gross says that despite everything, the group stands together. The union's focus on solidarity and connection is its strength. For GEO and unions all across the nation, the war wages quietly on. Malik Cardell, US 7 News. Present for coffee every Thursday afternoon in the Geneva Room located on the corner of 5th and Daniel to ask questions and stay informed. In other university news, several deans are calling for more tools to deal with sexual misconduct allegations against faculty members. The request was made by a letter to the chancellor and provost after new details of the investigation into law professor Jay Kaysen developed. The letter was signed by all 17 deans on campus. The letter said the law school case presents an opportunity for closer examination of our campus's processes and procedures for addressing allegations of misconduct. The letter included College of Law Dean Vikram Amar's call for making the investigation process quicker and expanding sections when dealing with sexual misconduct situations. Last week, law faculty also called on the university to change its policies and use a different definition of sexual harassment. Previously, campus investigators said Kaysen's behavior did not meet that definition. University spokesperson Robin Kaler said the university took action immediately to ensure no such violation will occur again. Kaler said the chancellor is eager to work with all involved to review campus policy. Kaysen has denied all allegations and issued an apology last week. He continues teaching and advising students. As for another contentious topic on campus, one campus re restaurant has taken some heat outside the kitchen after posting a very controversial shirt on their website. Cracked Restaurant on Green Street posted a t-shirt design of an egg with a Native American headdress on online. The shirt was immediately taken down and an apology was made on their social media sites. The restaurant faced criticism from people all around the community as the shirt was meant to resemble former Illinois ma mascot Chief Illiniwick. The owner of Crack doesn't want to be part of any racial implications, but will try to avoid this from happening again. pretty lighthearted and have a good sense of humor about most things, so a lot of uh, things that might be considered not PC uh, do go a little over my head. Um, but just trying to be a little, I guess, more respectful to the people that do get offended by uh, certain, certain things. This has reopened the conversation on campus about the chief that has both sides of the argument going after each other. The owner hopes that both sides can come together and have an open discussion about the issue. Elsewhere on campus, with over 170 campuses around the nation participating, University of Illinois students are proud to be the first I Stand With Immigrants Day of Action to campus. This annual event is a part of the I Am an Immigrant campaign that incorporates the diversity immigrants bring to the country and to this campus. 
Throughout the night, students in cultural sororities and fraternities participated in different activities that show why being an immigrant is important in today's society. Tables were set up with henna tattoos, coloring stickers, and a map placing activity to show where students originated from. This opportunity gave students the ability to explore their heritage and celebrate the diversity that forms the unique story of coming to America. Even though fall is in full swing, it's never too cold for some ice cream, especially when it's for a good cause. On Monday, local business Jarling's Custard Cup donated 20 of every purchase to help, uh, help another local organization, Courage Connection. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and the Women's Resource Center on campus held a month-long span of events called Dining for Donations. Different restaurants such as Portillo's, Monocle's, and Jarling's took part to help fund those in need. Customers who donated to the cause felt it was very important to be vocal about these issues. I think it's important that if other women see and hear about things that could help them in their daily life, it could help them realize that this is an issue maybe that they're facing and that they're not alone. Courage Connection provides shelter and supportive services of victims of domestic violence. From 2017 to 20, 20 alone, they provided counseling and shelter for more than 200 people in the community. They have to come after the break. We'll see how one grassroots organization grew to serve thousands in the county. And UI7 weather correspondent Nora Rogers will have the full weather forecast, so don't go away. I send him a text. He texts me back and say, who dis? <laughs> the next few weeks, you just made fun of me, like would answer the door and say, who dis? Who dis? <laughs> Drop off a warm meal and get more than you expect. Volunteer at americaletsdolunch.org. Welcome back to UI7 News. Here at the University of Illinois, food and nutrition students are getting first-hand lessons of putting food on the table and money in their pockets. It's a tasty experience of value from the kitchen. UI7's Maddie Bunton got to see how things are heating up. Bevier Cafe is a real-life classroom that is staffed, managed, and ran by food science and nutrition majors. Assistant Professor Jordan Brotherton says it's about giving them the skills and tools they need to open doors for their future. Uh, they're getting hands-on experience in a commercial kitchen, uh, and they can apply that whether they wind up working in a restaurant, uh, whether they wind up uh, working in a hotel, a casino. Uh, it's very broadly applicable. Uh, the cafe is open Monday through Friday from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. And within that time, instructors such as Quantity Foods Manager Carter Phillips work to prepare them for the expected and, more importantly, the unexpected. So when they go into the kitchen and the first person who calls off, they're able to jump in there, get their hands dirty, and get, what job, get whatever the job needs to be done um, and feel comfortable doing it because they've done it here first uh, in a controlled atmosphere. During the course of the semester, students go through rotations including student manager, hot foods, pantry, and bakery. Students also have the ability to create their own recipe and figure out how much it will cost to mass produce. One student, Aaron Davis, says this learning experience is also about tending to their number one client, the customer. The cafe it really focuses on customer service as well and really building our customer service skills. And I think in any job that you do, um, customer service is a large part of that. So we're getting some really valuable experience um, with working through problems or um, solving other things with customers, which I think will be really valuable. Right. Students say that it's great when people visit their cafe not only to enjoy the food, they too enjoy the learning experience from their visitors. For UI7 News, I'm Maddie Bunton. Not many students know about Bevier Cafe, so hopefully more people can check it out and give them the experience they need. One in five children in Champaign County suffer from food insecurity, not knowing where their next meal may come from. UI7's Andrea Flores got the chance to speak with one organization trying to fight this epidemic. Being a kid again on a Saturday morning, but not knowing where you'll get your next meal. That's what nearly 20% of children in Champaign County unfortunately worry about. But that's where Feeding Our Kids, a local nonprofit founded by Ann Kirkland and Janelle Keene, steps in. We don't feel that kids should have to worry about where their food comes from each weekend, and we really want them to know that we believe that they can succeed. The two moms noticed the problem at their kids' schools, 
so they started preparing weekend food packages for 18 students. Now they strive to feed about 900 kids every week with food sorts like these. Since feeding our kids began in 2013, thousands of children have received food packages, so they don't have to worry about what they'll eat later. What started with just two schools has expanded to 36 schools in just five years across the county. Food insecurity can happen at any time and for any reason, like poverty, job loss, death in the family, and illness. For Feeding Our Kids Board Secretary Andrea Sullivan, tragedy struck in 2010 when her husband lost his job, leaving their family of four in the lurch. It, it was very frustrating too because it was like you would go day to day and like not know, um, you know, like on Monday, like if you're going to have a dinner on Tuesday um, and you just take what, you know, few dollars you have and try to make it stretch. Not only do these backpack lunches get students through the weekends, the nutrition helps children do better in school. If one bag of, you know, a small bag of food will help them do that and help them continue to go back to school every week, that's the least we can do as adults. Anyone interested in helping Feeding Our Kids can visit their website, feedingourkids.org, for information on how to volunteer or donate. In Champaign, I'm Andrea Flores, UI7 News. Feeding Our Kids is involved in a number of outreach events in the community, including here on campus. So if you are, if you are in a group or are interested in volunteering, be sure to check out their website at feedingourkids.org. Highlighting some good news in our community, one CU business has been making a positive impact in the elderly community for 21 years now. Circle of Friends is an adult day center that allows elderly individuals the opportunity to remain in their own home while going to the center for fun, friendship, and any other care they may need. The customers, some with special medical needs, are able to enjoy arts and crafts, go on special trips, or even music therapy. The director of programming, Kathy Rose, says an important factor in their business are the many student volunteers. We have different schools that come and visit with us and we visit with them, so I think it's important to have different generations interacting together. Anyone interested in volunteering can go to circleoffriendsadc.net for more information. So Bobby, are you excited for Halloween tomorrow? Oh, of course I am. Let's check in with UI7's weather correspondent, Nora Rogers, to see how Halloween's weather and the rest of the week's forecast is looking. Thanks, guys. Um, temperatures today didn't feel particularly like fall. Just when we thought we were done with the warm temperatures, the sun came right out today. Uh, right now, it is 69 degrees in Champaign, and the sun is still out with some clouds as well. The sun will be setting pretty soon, actually, at 5.53 tonight. Looking at other local temperatures right now, they look pretty consistent. You can see Springfield is at 72 degrees, and over in Danville, they're down to 67. Moving across to Peoria, temperatures are down to 65 degrees, and in Rantoul and Champaign, we're at 69. And other Midwest temperatures, it's 57 up in Des Moines, Iowa right now and 60 in Kansas City. St. Louis and Paducah are at 76 degrees right now. Pretty nice for an October evening. Up in Chicago, you can see it's 64 degrees and 71 down in Louisville. Going to our national temperatures, right now we can see they're at 54 degrees over in Seattle and 72 in Los Angeles. Moving over to 40 degrees in Denver, but a huge rise down in Phoenix at 83 degrees. Dallas is seeing similar heat at 79 degrees. Looks like they aren't as warm up in Boston and New York City. Temperatures are in the 50s, but down in Miami, they're looking at 82. Pretty nice October day for them. Let's move back to our temperatures for tonight. We should expect some rain, which is probably where the warmer temperatures are coming from right now. Showers will be later on around 9 or 10, and the temperature will stay around 50 degrees. Tomorrow looks to be a fairly warm ha Halloween. There's a chance of showers in the morning and later at night, but it should hold out during trick-or-treating hours. The high will reach 58 and drop to 44 at night, so it won't be a super chilly Halloween like we've seen in the past. Looking forward to the end of the week, there will be consistent showers throughout the day and night Thursday. We'll hit a low of 33 degrees, 38 degrees Thursday night, but the next two days should be dry and not too cold. We're looking at a Friday high of 55, but we will see our lowest temperature of the five day at 33 degrees. On Saturday, we will see a little sun and reach a high of 57. A pretty perfect fall day for those watching the football game or doing Dad's Weekend festivities. But we will end the weekend with a little rain, mostly in the evening, and a high of 60 degrees. So yeah, it looks pretty well for uh, the trick-or-treaters out there and for Halloween in general. So yeah, excited not, for that. Not too bad. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. Well, thanks, Nora. Well, coming up after the break, sports correspondent Chris Joe will have your latest sports updates. What have you got for us, Chris? Yeah, Bobby, uh, new World Series champion has been crowned. Uh, the first edition of the college football playoff rankings will be released tonight. So all that more coming up in sports. So, is there an election coming up? You're serious? You didn't really vote? I didn't even know there was an election. I'll, I'll call my dad. He knows a lot of stuff. Hopefully he can figure this guy out. Hey, Dad, Um, who should I vote for in the election next week? Pat, Pat Quinn? Rob Begoyevich? Rob Begoyevich? Um, okay, oh, you're coming down next weekend, though. Awesome. Well, okay, I'll just see you then. Bye. He was useless. These guys are ridiculous. Friday, 10 a.m. Welcome back. I'm Chris Joe here with the UI7 Sports Wrap-Up. A champion was crowned over the weekend. The Red Sox beat the Dodgers 5-1, finishing the Dodgers in five games. David Price continued to exercise his playoff demons, picking up the win. Price pitched seven innings of one-run ball with five strikeouts. And first baseman Steve Pierce garnered World Series MVP honors. He smacked three home runs and drove in eight runs overall during the series. Switching over to college football, the Illini were not as successful facing the Maryland Terrapins. The Illini were steamrolled 63-33. to Maryland running back Javon Leak rushed for 140 yards and three touchdowns. Leak also scored on a 97-yard kickoff return touchdown, and Leak became the first Maryland player to score four touchdowns in a game since 2010. The Illinois defense gave up 712 total yards of offense uh, following the game, and Illinois defensive coordinator Hardy Nickerson was resigned due to health reasons. Head coach Lovey Smith will take over defensive play, uh, defensive play calling duties for the rest of the season. Of and the first college football playoff rankings of the 2018 seasons will be released at 6 p.m. tonight. Sports Illustrated released their predictions of the rankings. They foresee the number one ranked Alabama Crimson Tide will play the fourth ranked Notre Dame Fighting Irish. On the other side of the bracket, Sports Illustrated predicts the second ranked Clemson Tigers will face number three LSU. Alabama squares off against LSU in Death Valley this Saturday. And um, that's it for this edition of the UI7 Sports Wrap. All right, thanks, Chris. Halloween is almost here. It's tomorrow. And with that, so is all the candy. Well, if you're trick-or-treating in New York and you don't like candy, well, you're in luck. Reese's has a great idea starting Wednesday afternoon in, a New, York, in New York City. A Reese's candy converter will be set up on Fifth Avenue if you're looking to trade those unwanted almond joints and candy corn. The machine will swap your unwanted candy for Reese's free peanut butter cups. That's quite the currency trade, the company says. The machine will exchange up to 10,000 cups for five hours. So if you want to take a quick, quick trip to NYC, you better get there now. So what's your favorite candy? I'm, I'm always looking for the Twix. Either left or right, they taste both the same, and I love it. I love it. How Mine is Kit Kat all the way. Kit Kat? Um, see, one of our colleagues really enjoys candy corn, and for me, that's definitely on the lower candy tier. Candy corn, yeah. if I got that, I, I'm looking here. to throw it out or give it to like Also not a big fan of Almond Joy either, but no. outside of those, I think uh, I'm an equal um, opportunity. I'm going to have to say guys. Snickers is the Snickers. best. Snickers? You're not, okay. you're not you, you when choice. you're hungry, right? Yeah, you're not you when you're hungry. Snickers, of course, of course. Yeah, um, I would say my second favorite might have to be going to the candy side, like Skittles. Skittles, um, Skittles, Skittles are, are delicious. Yeah. Uh, I love M&M's. Peanut M&M's are always the move. Yeah. I like the peanut butter. Oh, oh I never had those. those are good. Those oh, are I good. think I'm just going to buy myself my own candy this year since we're a little old. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, okay. Be, be sure to follow us on social media for more of our stories. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and Twitter. And subscribe to us on YouTube. And if you have any story ideas or spooky and fun Halloween photos you'd like to share, we'd love to hear from you. That's, that's it for us from UI7 News. Thanks for watching. And we'll be back Tuesday with another live edition of UI7 News. Have a good night and have a spooky Halloween, Illini. <laughs>